Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, welcome, welcome, welcome. As promised, I thought it would be important to go through this uh, specific information. Um, by now, there's pretty good grumbling that Joseph Robinet Biden will be stepping down from the ticket in 2024 due to poor performance stemming from the debate stage originally. Um, so I wanted to be very clear on who could replace him. So we're going to talk about who can replace him, how uh, the process kind of works, and uh, what's in store coming up for the 2024 election. Uh, it shouldn't be terribly long. We'll try and get through as much of it as we can. Um, all the information is available at the local Secretary of State. You can reference and cross-check all this information. It's also available on Ballotpedia. Um, shows all the different filings, deadlines, and all that stuff. So, let's get started, boys and girls. Uh, will it be Gavin Newsom? Will it be Gretchen Whitmer? Will it be Josh Shapiro? Will it be either Michael or Michelle Obama? Well, let's take a look at it. So for those who don't know, in the United States, we use what's called the Electoral College. There are 538 possible delegates up for grabs. 270 of those delegates are needed in a general election to win the presidency of the United States. So now we'll get into a little bit more about the party rules and stuff like that. While neither party's nominee is official until delegates elect a candidate at the national convention, there are party rules and state laws that come into play if a party seeks to replace its presumptive nominee. And we're going to go through some of those. Uh, state by state rules and available delegates for Democrats. Uh, so I wanted to go into this just briefly. Ballot access, which is the first hurdle of running for president. Um, so there's several hurdles and steps to run for president. These regulations that we're about to see, the next, like, 60 slides, uh, which are set of, at the state level, and, and some of them are constitutionally mandated by the states. Some of them are legislatively mandated by the states. Um, every state has a little bit different. We're going to focus on the filing deadlines, the number of delegates available in that state, and and we'll kind of keep tally of what's still available, what's passed, and by how long. So uh, that's what we're going to kind of do here. A presidential candidate must prepare to meet ballot access requirements well in advance of primaries, caucuses, and the general election if he or she wants to make it to the election day ballot. Uh, we've already been through the primaries. We've already been through the caucuses. Um, we're coming up on that general election. So already you see a couple problems. Uh, you have to be on it for the ballots, or you have to be on the uh, following requirements for the primaries and caucuses, which have already well taken a place and are well in the past at this point. So um, one thing that I'll do is a load of people run for president of the United States. Um, a load of people file the legal documentation to do so. Um, that's not uncommon. Happens all the time. Um, some of the most random people. Uh, so at the end, we're going to go through every single name, every single one of every single person that is eligible to be president of the United States on the Democratic ticket. Um, we will go through every single name that is available for the Democrats to choose from and every single name that has met these ballot access requirements. So, 
We'll go through those in just a moment. So we start with the great state of Alabama. 11-10-2003 was the filing application deadline. Um, so we are we are well, well past it. Well, well past it. Um, there is no, uh, there's no exceptions in Alabama. Um, no late filings, none of that. Uh, that is your filing deadline for ballot access, which is the first step to running for president of the United States. So we're already up to nine that are ineligible. Uh, Alaska, one twenty-two twenty-four. Its three delegates are unavailable. Same thing with Alaska. Arizona, 12-11 of 2023. So about seven months ago, their deadline passed. Again, no exceptions. 11 delegates brings us to a total of 23 unavailable. Arkansas, 11-14, 2023 is their absolute filing deadline. Their six delegates are unavailable to a candidate who is not currently registered for president. California, big state. 12-15-2023 is their filing deadline, and their 54 available delegates would not be available to a candidate not already on the ballot with the ballot access laws. Colorado, 12-11-2023 is their filing deadline. Ten delegates there would not be available. Connecticut, February 9, 2024. So even five months ago, no exceptions, seven delegates. We're now up to 100 unavailable delegates and some in states where Democrats absolutely must have to win the presidency like the state of California. Imagine a Democrat not winning California and still winning the White House. Delaware, Joe's home state, 2-2-2-2024, or excuse me. We're now up to 103 delegates with Delaware's delegates. Again, these are the delegates unavailable to somebody not registered under the ballot access laws. District of Columbia, three delegates available with a filing deadline of 3 6 20, 24, 106 delegates. Florida, the great state of Florida, battleground state. Uh, been more reliably read, but it is still considered battleground. 11 30 of 2023 20, is the filing deadline, and its 30 delegates are unavailable to a Democrat not registered to be president of the United States. Georgia, 1-8-2024. Its 16 delegates are unavailable. Hawaii, 1-24-2024. Its four delegates are unavailable. Idaho, 3-15-2024. Its four delegates are unavailable. Illinois, another Democrat stronghold. 1-5-2024. Its deadline has well since passed. Its 19 delegates are unavailable. Indiana, 2-9-2024. Its 11 delegates would be unavailable. Kansas, 1-19-2024. Kansas's six delegates would be unavailable if you did not pass the very, very minor hurdle of the ballot access laws in the state of Kansas. If you did not file by 1-5-2024 in Kentucky, you would not have access to the eight available delegates. If you did not file by 12-15-2023 in Louisiana, you would not have access to their eight available delegates. And as you see, we're already up to 212. Uh, Maine, 12-1-2023. Is the filing deadline for their four delegates were 216. Maryland 29 2024. Their 10 delegates 226. Massachusetts 
1-5-2024 was the filing deadline. 11 delegates up for grabs. The great state of Michigan, 12-8-2023 is the filing deadline. 15 delegates are unavailable if you are not filed by that time. Takes us to 52. Minnesota, 1-2 of 2024 is the filing deadline in Minnesota to have access to their 10 delegates. Mississippi, 1-15-2024 1-15-2024 is the deadline for access to their six delegates. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Democrats cannot win 2024 because they don't have access to enough delegates already, but we'll keep going. Uh, Missouri one twenty two twenty twenty four. Even if they won every state that they have access to, what that meant, is even if they won every state that they have access to, uh, which you'll find is is not a ton, um, even if they win every single state that they have access to, they still would not be able to pass the delegate hurdle to win the presidency. So Missouri, with its 10 delegates, you had to file by 1 at 2020, 122, 2024. Montana, its four delegates had to be filed for by 3 11 2024. Nebraska, 3 14 2024 for access to their five delegates. Nevada, 10 16 2023 for their six delegates. New Hampshire, 10 27 2023 for their four. New Jersey, to have access to their 14 delegates, you had to be filed. With ballot access laws by 3 5 2024. New Mexico, to have access to their five delegates, you had to be filed by 3 12 2024. New York, New York, uh, to have access to their 28 delegates, you'd have to be filed by January 18th, 2024. North Carolina, for their 16 delegates, 12 22 2023. North Dakota, their three delegates, 1 5 2024. Ohio, and that battleground state that probably goes to President Trump because of his appointment of JD Vance as the vice president, but still the, the Democrats would love to have a fighting chance at it. Um, and you would have had to have filed by 12 20 2023 to have access to their 17 delegates. Oklahoma to have access to their seven delegates, uh, you would have had to file by 12 6 2023. Oregon to have access to their three delegates, 3 12 2024. Pennsylvania to have access to their 19 delegates, 1 8 2024. Rhode Island, 1 11 2024 to have access to their four delegates. South Carolina, you would have had to register by 11 at 10 at 2023 to have access to their nine delegates. South Dakota, by 3 26 2024 for access to their three delegates. Tennessee, 12 5 2023 for access to their 11 delegates. Texas, great state of Texas, you had to register by 12 11 2023 to have access to their. 40 delegates. Utah, you would have had to register by 12 1 2023 for access to their six delegates. Vermont, 12 15 2023 for access to their three delegates. Virginia, 12 14 2023 for their 13 delegates. Washington, 1 9 2024 is the following deadline for access to their 12 delegates. As you see, we're getting up there, real up there in the numbers, 519 already, with the addition of West Virginia's four delegates, which had a filing deadline of 127 2024. Wisconsin has a 130 2024 deadline for their 10 delegates. Wyoming, 219 2024 delegate or deadline for their three delegates. And so those are all the available states that the 
Democrat nominee for president, if not registered under ballot access laws, would not be eligible to receive a single one of those 532 electoral votes for president if they decided to register today. Uh, The one that the Democrat could win is Iowa. Iowa has a weird filing system with a static deadline. The Democrats would have access to it. A total of six, six delegates. Um, for those of you counting, that that is really far, really far from 270 delegates. There is no conceivable way that you can turn six into 270, even if you cheat like hell. So now I wanted to go through the eligible because we talked about the filing deadlines. We talked about the fact that they're statutory. Um, some of them are certainly, certainly um, state requirements of conservative states that are not going to change their election. I've heard that argument. Um, this is not something that the Democrats can just change. It's not something that they can argue or hear in court. I mean, these deadlines have held for ever, literally forever. Um, and as you'll see with some of the names on these lists, the barrier to being eligible to run for president of the United States is so ridiculously low. Now, when you get into talking about party fundraising and all that stuff and being an eligible considered candidate, that's a different story. That takes obviously effort and it takes connections and it takes service and so on and so forth. But these are all the individuals that are registered, registered to be president that would receive or could potentially receive some of the 538 delegates available if they were nominated by the DNC to become the presidential candidate on the den- the Democrat side. So these are the people that are eligible. Remember we talked about um, that first section, the 532 electoral votes that are not eligible if you register today. We're, we're using that as a, if you registered today. So these individuals registered before the filing deadlines and are eligible. If you registered today, you wouldn't be eligible for those 532 delegates that we talked about. Uh, Aaron M. He, Adam Oratari, Adrian Maurice Hall, A.J. Dalith, Alan Huddleston, Alex Abitan, Alfonso Alberto Ramos, Alita Felton, Alan Cheney Shummers, Amanda Catherine Eccleson, Andrew Smirker, and Parkinson, Anthony Manalakos, Antonio Marco Pantalo, Armando Perez Cerrado, Ars Vincent Soweski, Ashley Powell, Azim Hussein. And again, this is a list of the people that are eligible that did go through the process, did did uh, did register, and did potentially gain ballot access. Beatrice Ramos, Bella Berg, Von Verg. Benjamin Garcia, Brian Matthew Owen, Brittany McCown, Brian James, Carson Loveless, Chink Uger, uh, from from the television program, Charles Camilleri, Christian Noel Powers, Christopher Campbell, Chris Whaler, Constas L. Johnson, Grand DeAndre Smith. Antoine Samuel Watkins, David Bernard, David Cash, David Michael Olskamp. Oops, I forgot going. Sorry. 
Uh, so that's the end of the second page. D.C. Jefferson. Uh, Dean Phillips, which ran against Joe Biden in the primary. Uh, Deborah Sharp. Diane Hobson. Donald Picard. Doris Brown. Dorsey Porter. Dustin Rorex. Dykeba. Nicole Rogers. Earl Davis. Eben Cambridge. Edward Nathaniel Grimes, Eric Lechner, Ethan Witzlig Hamby, Yvette Rochelle Tippett, Frank J. Lozada, Gabriel Cornejo, Gary Davis, Gary J. Brown, Greg Brucato, Jerry Coleman, Gebron Nichols, Golda D. Harris, Gregory Marquis Thomas, Harvey Wizard, Heather Munoz, Herbert Ezekiel, Zeke Smith, Howard Dawson, Hudson Theodore Zoller, Hung Hung Chan, Isaiah Reed, Jamarian Walker, James Nixon, James Orlando Ogle III, Jason Palmer, Jeff Miles, Jennifer Lee Ann Nay, Jennifer McMurray, Jody Smithenson, Joe Biden, Joseph Rodman at Biden, is eligible for the ballots and all of those delegates. Uh, Joe Exotic, John Coyne, Joe Exotic, the tiger guy, is eligible to be president. Uh, John Coyne, John Gagliardi, John Washington III, Jonathan Twan Tran, Jose Font, Joseph Firmage, Joseph J. Manager, Joshua David Horitz, Julie Jones, Casey Nicole Samples, Keir and Walker Keith Smith, Keelan Farrell Smith, Kenny Taylor, Kevin Gilroy, Kevin John Carney, Kina Shamer Carey, Christopher Lee Davis, Larry D. Esvedo, Lee Mercer Jr., Lee Rhodes, Lindsey Kalk, Logan Michael Weir, Lori Ann Henriques, Marcus Alexander Branch, Marianne Williamson, the crazy lady, uh, allegedly. That's what many in the mainstream have called her. Uh, Mark Galfat, Mark Richard Prazik, Mark Schoofer, Mark Stuart Greenstein, Martin Foster Robbins, Mary Clement. Maddie Preston, Merrill Donald Wilson, Michael Calabrese, Michael Chad Lemire, Michael D. Ottavio, Michael D. Swing, Michael Landingham, Michael Noonan, Michael Soderer, Michael Steinberg, Michael Dillinghast, Mike E. Lane, Nancy Elizabeth Rodriguez, Nicole Bonilla, uh, Nita Mildred Rice, Pedro J. Velez, Perry Jones, Philip Brian Kleski, President Body, I nominate that guy, uh, Ralph Robbie Huffman, Randall Wick, Raymond G. Sini, J. Sini, excuse me, Rapunzel Perkins, Richard Hale Nelson, Rick Chavez, Ricky Prado, Robert Carlos. Ayala, Robert Ion Moldavsky, Robert Jordan, Robert Michael Becker, Rob Spencer, Roger Lee Roos, Roland Cuado de la Agorcle, Ron S. Bull, Ryan Kraft, Ryan McCarty, uh, Ryan P. Kirkpatrick, Sehun Park, Salmon Mustafa, St. Jeremy Endley, Samuel D'Amico, Sean McGuire, Shabajat Bahara, Shane Alexander Muhammad, Chantel Newman, Shanae Ahn, Skiles, Fitzgerald McCauley, Soria Foss, Stephen Leon, Stephen Lyons Sr., Stephen Paul Murphy, Stephen Diaz, Stephen Fleck, 
Stuart Favor, Sakima Powell, Teresa Lynn Bukovinek, Theodore Milton Earth Fagan, Thomas Daly, Thomas Francis Winterbottom, Tiffany Gail Keller, Todd J. Ashcroft, Trinita Walker, Trista Givina Genova, uh, Ulrich Najahar, Valentin Vidal, Victoria Don Zieg, Wayne G. Villanus, Wayne Pope, Whitney Medeiros, William Gailey, and Willie Carter. One of the names that you might have uh, found that wasn't there was Kamala Harris. The other reason Kamala Harris is eligible is because Kamala Harris was on the Democrat registration uh, for the incumbent as the vice president. If Joe Biden were to step down and not run, Kamala Harris would assume that spot. That's why she's the only person that's entitled to the campaign finances that are available. And she's the only person that is eligible for that spot. She's the one that's filed. So even if they said, because I've heard this one, even if they said, we're going to fire Kamala Harris, we're going to appoint Gavin Newsom, and we're going to switch political part or political uh, operatives. One, you wouldn't get that done or confirmed with a split Senate, and uh, that would become a mess. Uh, you also wouldn't be able to pass on the registration because originally when Joe, Joe did all the filings before those deadlines, he listed Kamala Harris as his running mate. So on the FEC election paperwork, it says Kamala Harris. So Kamala Harris is part of the Joe Biden campaign, uh, and she would be the only person in any scenario that could be potentially elevated to be president of the United States on the work that Joe Biden's done. I wanted to just, I wanted to just make it perfectly clear: people who are not eligible. People who are not on that list, people did not uh, effectively file within the deadline for the president of the United States on the Democrat ticket. There was no Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, Josh Shapiro, Mike Obama, Michelle Obama, or any other person that I didn't just name in those previous names. Any other person that the media tries to scare you with is not, and at this point in time, cannot be in any way eligible to run for president of the United States as a Democrat in the 2024 election. Now, I know some people will completely ignore everything I just said and tell me, but, but. And I'm telling you, like, there's there's no possible way. Even if they even if they change laws in some places, um, the undertaking that it would take would be so incredible, like nothing we've ever seen before. And we're coming up on August for a November election, and we're talking about year court challenge years of court challenges. Um, it, it's just, sometimes, you know, you have to just think of the, the path of least resistance and the path of least resistance, as I think I just showed you, was that it's not that difficult to run for president of the United States. Uh, anybody who's 35 and born in the United States can do it, being a United States citizen. It is not a difficult proposition would not be worth the legal challenge and is not worth the time and energy that it would take to do it at this stage. Um, this is often when you see people like Nikki Haley, when you people see people like Ron DeSantis, they ran for president and people say that they dropped out or they quit running for president. And that is untrue. They maintain their registration 
they maintain their certifications. And that's why you often hear the word suspended campaign. Because there are deadlines to file. And once that is gone, God forbid anything happens to your candidate. It falls back to a process in which eligibility is determined by those who met the filing requirements for the literal first step with a very low barrier of entry to obtain permission for your name to be on the ballot to run for president of the United States. So in mainstream talks to you about Josh Shapiro is the front runner, or Gretchen Whitmer is the favorite. They're either lying or incompetent, and I think it's probably a little bit of both. Those individuals are not, cannot be, and under no circumstance will be eligible for president of the United States in the 2024 election cycle. Your main contenders will be Dean Phillips, Kamala Harris, Marion Williamson, and and that's about it. By not having a robust primary process, um, by the unification of the party and and not allowing people to challenge the party narrative, you put yourself in a really bad spot, and I'm excited every day for it. So, uh, that is why none of these individuals on screen could or will be president of the United States in 2024. Um, and that's why none of them are eligible to even run against Donald Trump. And that's why the DNC, if Joe Biden does indeed step down, is going to be a magical shit show. It's going to be it for me. I'll talk to you all soon. Have a good night.